Heading by to pick up the count in 30 seconds. Picking up the count in 10 seconds. The countdown clock will resume on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. T minus nine minutes and counting. GLS auto sequence has been initiated. The computer here in the firing room is now controlling all events associated with the launch. Over a thousand parameters are going to be checked in the next nine minutes. Right now we're activating the onboard flight data recorders on Atlantis. We're about to transmit the final program pre-launch commands. And that's in work. Fuel cell buses being activated. Central buses are connected to fuel cells. We are going to be retracting the crew orbiter access arm in about 15 seconds. TLS is go for orbiter access arm retract. Atlantis OTC, the station is waiting for its spare parts, and Nicole is waiting for a trip home, so we won't keep you here any longer. Have a great ride to orbit and a fantastic mission. Awesome. Thanks. That was orbiter test conductor Jeff Lauffer from the United Space Alliance. Coming up in about 30 seconds, the pilot will perform the auxiliary power unit pre-start operation. APUs actually start at T minus five minutes. JRPS, OTC, start APU display recorders. APU recorders are running. TLT, OTC, perform APU pre-start. T minus five minutes, 30 seconds. We're starting our firing room data recorders here in firing room four. We're arming the solid rocket booster safe and arm devices. TLS is go for orbiter APU start. PLT OTC perform APU start. That's CDR OTC reconfigure heaters. Our terminating locks replenishment. Your reconfig is complete.
In about 30 seconds, we will we'll see the orbiter's flight controls put through a final check. Coming up in about 15 seconds. That will be followed by a steering check of the three main engines, which we will also be able to see. TLS is go for purge sequence four. Now see a steering check of the rudder. Coming up on steering check for the three main engines. Verify now those three main engines are in the start position. Starting the Gox Vent Arm Retract, the beanie cap. Caution and one in memory clear, no unexpected errors. I copy. In Atlantis, close and lock your visors, initiate O2 flow. Close and visors, initiating O2 flow. Fuel cells now on internal. Terminating liquid hydrogen replenishment. Liquid hydrogen tank now being pressurized. Sound suppression water system now being armed for release. Confirmation we have three main engines ready for ignition. One minute. Space shuttle now on internal power. Liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen fill and drain valves are closed. Solid rocket booster flight data recorders are activated. And the handoff to Atlantis's onboard computers. Atlantis now in control of the countdown. Firing chain is armed. Sound suppression water system activated. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 3, 2, 1, 0, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis on a mission to build, resupply, and to do research on the International Space Station. Houston now controlling. Atlantis begins its penultimate journey to shore up the International Space Station. Atlantis. Atlantis now in the proper alignment for its eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Four and a half million pounds of hardware and humans taking aim on the International Outpost. 30 seconds into the flight. 
Atlantis almost two miles in altitude, almost six miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center already, traveling 500 miles an hour. The three liquid fuel main engines now throttling back to 72% of rated performance, going into the bucket, reducing the stress on the shuttle as it breaks through the sound barrier. 55 seconds into the flight, all systems operating normally, 900 miles an hour. The speed of Atlantis right now, six miles in altitude, nine miles downrange. Atlantis, go with throttle up. Copy, go with throttle up. The throttle up call acknowledged by Commander Charlie Hobaugh, joined on the flight deck by pilot Butch Wilmore, flight engineer Randy Bresnick and Leland Melvin, seated down on the mid-deck are Mike Foreman and Bobby Satcher, kicking off their work week with a Monday commute to orbit. One minute, 30 seconds into the flight, Atlantis 13 miles in altitude, 15 miles downrange, traveling almost 2,000 miles an hour. Three good auxiliary power units, three good fuel cells, three good main engines. One minute, 50 seconds into the flight, 10 seconds away from solid rocket booster separation. Booster officer confirms staging a good solid rocket booster separation. Guidance now converging. Atlanta steering into the center lane of Highway 129 en route to the International Space Station. Two minutes, 20 seconds into the flight, 34 miles in altitude, 48 miles downrange. Atlanta's traveling 3,200 miles an hour. The propulsion officer in mission control reports that the orbital maneuvering system engines have ignited. Atlantis kicking on the afterburners. Copy two engine down. Atlantis flying on the singular power of its three liquid fuel main engines, draining about a half a ton of fuel per second from the large fuel tank. Coming up on the three minute mark into the flight, Atlantis 46 miles in altitude, 81 miles downrange, traveling almost 4,000 miles an hour. Atlantis speeding straight as an arrow toward its date with the International Space Station Wednesday morning. Three and a half minutes into the flight, all of Atlantis' systems functioning by the book. 55 miles in altitude, 120 miles downrange, traveling almost 5,000 miles an hour. Atlantis, negative return. Atlantis now too far downrange, too high in altitude to return to the launch site in the event of an engine failure. All three engines performing perfectly. 4 minutes 20 seconds into the flight, Atlantis now 62 miles in altitude, 180 miles downrange, traveling almost 6,000 miles an hour. All systems uh, performing normally, Atlantis on course, on track for its preliminary orbit. The environmental systems officer reports a good flash of apparator system activated for Atlantis, providing cooling for the shuttle's avionics until the payload bay doors are opened about an hour and a half into the flight. Atlantis, press to ATO. Copy, press to ATO. That call up from Capcom Chris Ferguson indicating that Atlantis can now make minimal orbital altitude targets in the event of an engine failure. However, all three engines continue to perform normally, as do the auxiliary power units and the three power producing fuel cells. 
five and a half minutes into the flight. Atlantis now 67 miles in altitude, 312 miles downrange, traveling almost 8,000 miles an hour. Thanks for single engine up three. Atlantis now beginning to roll to a heads up position, the main engine swiveling, enabling, enabling the shuttle to uh, move to a heads-up position above its fuel tank, gaining more favorable communications through the tracking and data relay satellite system as it heads uphill. Atlantis, press the Miko, single engine Zaragoza 104. Press the Miko, single engine Zaragoza 104. That call from Capcom Chris Ferguson uh, to Commander Charlie Hobaugh indicating that Atlantis can make normal Atlantis, orbital cutoff four. targets in the event of an engine failure. Go for the pitch. Okay, nominal shutdown, go for plus X, go for the pitch. Now six minutes, 45 seconds into the flight. Atlantis, 66 miles in altitude, almost 500 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, traveling almost 11,000 miles an hour. 90 seconds left in powered flight. Atlantis, single engine press, 104. Single engine press, 104. Coming up on the seven and a half minute mark into the flight, the main engines will once again be throttled down to limit the stress on the shuttle and its six crew members to that of three times the effect of gravity. Atlantis approaching a speed of more than four miles a second. At the time of main engine cutoff a minute from now, Atlantis will enter its preliminary orbit at a speed of five miles a second. Seven minutes, 40 seconds into the flight. Atlantis providing a smooth ride uphill for Commander Charlie Hobaugh and his crew. 700 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, traveling 15,000 miles an hour. Eight minutes, 10 seconds into the flight. Standing by for main engine cutoff. Main engine cutoff confirmed by the booster officer. Standing by for external tank separation. And the bird's eye view from the external tank camera of external tank separation. Atlantis now in its preliminary orbit. Commander Charlie Hobaugh will now maneuver Atlantis so that cameras embedded in the shuttle's umbilical well can perform photography of the discarded external fuel tank. And Mike Foreman and Leland Melvin are about to use digital still and video cameras to capture handheld imagery of the tank for downlink a few hours from now. A flawless climb to orbit for the shuttle Atlantis and its six crew members en route now to the International Space Station. That was a beautiful launch to the International Space Station. Well, it's not to the International Space Station yet, yeah, but beautiful, beautiful launch uh, up to space um, by Space Shuttle Atlantis, or Orbital Vehicle 104. And uh, we'd like to thank everyone for joining us for our live coverage in high definition right here on SpaceVidCast.com. Now, a couple things to note. First, we will continue our high def coverage on SpaceVidCast.com. You can go to SpaceVidCast.com slash NASA HD. Now, that's not up quite yet. It will be up a little bit later. We split out our high definition and standard definition coverage after launch because NASA does not stream HD all all time. Right. Which means if we just did HD, you'd see a screen that says nothing available for most of the day. You don't want that. So just go to spacefigcast.com, check it out. You'll be able to watch the entire mission. We'll continue broadcasting live 24 7. All the EVAs, all the events, all the packaged stuff that they give us, you'll have live 
Well, <laughs> including the static. That was nice. Thanks. And back Thanks here for that, the It's pretty. <laughs> it is pretty. The there you go. A <laughs> uh, couple other things to note. We do have live shows every single Friday, almost every Friday, at 2 o'clock a.m. Coordinated Universal Time. For those of you in the United States, that's Thursday nights. That's 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 Central Standard Time, or 6 Pacific Standard Time. If you're anywhere else in the world, you can do the time zone conversion by going to spacefaitcast.com. There are no shows for the next two weeks. Weeks. One, because we're Space in a uh, different state for the next week, and then two, because in the U.S. it's Thanksgiving. But uh, join us back for that. Uh, so for those of you watching on YouTube, I hope you enjoyed our coverage. And remember, we've got even higher resolution stuff available in our Epic section, released in 2010. So you can get the full 720p 60 video file if you're an Epic member. Awesome. It's pretty awesome stuff. No, none of our graphics around or anything else. Just straight what we got from NASA is available to you for Epic. You can go to spacefakecast.com slash Epic for more information on how to subscribe to that. And, of course, we'd like to thank all of you for joining us. If you're watching us live, stay tuned. We've got some more giveaways for you. We've got some more Blast Off Blend coffee. We've also got some uh, um, Twitter workbooks and a bunch of other patches and a bunch of stuff. So stay with us. And thank you, everyone, for joining us on the main.